Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. Mark and Steve here in the studio on a beautiful day in Prescott, Arizona. And uh, it looks like we're, you haven't seen this yet, but we're doing a MacBreak Studio about MacBreak Studio. That's right. A <laughs> MacBreak about a MacBreak. It's very meta. All right. Well, let's see what you're going to talk about here. All right. So I have one of our MacBreak episodes, and you can see here, it's just you and I on a green screen, green screen stage. And I want to talk a little bit about our workflow. One of the things I love about Final Cut Pro is that you've got these really great interactive waveforms. So for example, um, you know, when I make a, a volume change, you know, you can just instantly see, you know, the reaction in the, yep. the waveform. And it, it tells you right away if you're too hot by the peaks get change color. Yeah, exactly. In fact, there's, a, there's an even better view here. If I hit control option up or down arrow, I can cycle through the various, you know, appearance modes. Yeah, and look at just audio if you want yeah, to. Yeah, in fact, when I'm working on audio, there's no reason I don't need to see our, our ugly mugs. Well, I just go ahead and work with the waveform view, right? Beautiful. So yeah. um, your point. And you could make the whole thing bigger in the Eclipse appearance. Yeah, I'm not, now it's interesting. I wish there was a keyboard shortcut for making this bigger. Yeah. You can do it in the browser, but you can't do it in the timeline. Yeah. So if you do want to adjust the clip height, you have to do it uh, right here yeah. in the. Uh, there are keyboard time. shortcuts, but they don't happen to work. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? Yes. Wow. Okay. So my first workflow tip is um, we record with separate mics as we're doing right now. And I'll want to expand the components to actually look at them. So I'll go into expand components. And right now you see oh, one track, okay, one component. There's, but wait a minute, there's two mics. So I'm gonna hit command four, open the inspector, go into the audio configuration area. I'm gonna have to select the top level of the component, actually the clip mm -hmm. itself. Right now it's set for stereo, because ah. that's how, say we record that way with our C100, okay. but it does record separate channels, left yes. and right. So yes. I'm gonna switch this to, to stereo. dual mono. Dual mono. And now there I, we go. there we go. Okay. Now I have to determine which one's you and which one's but me. But you can tell they're different right away. It's yeah. two separate mics, yep. Right, so I'll play it a little bit of this. You base sending, uh, sent us a less one to time of all. Okay, and I think this is you right here. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. Yep, that's yeah, that's your mic. And the waveform is higher there. Because yeah. our mics are picking up each other, so they're similar, but you can tell that that would be me down there. Exactly, and which, you know, which is why I typically tend to, like, I, you know, I'm getting older, I can't remember anything. Um, <laughs> I, I tend to want to uh, name these, so I'll select the top level, and I'll go back in here. And I know this, this Mono 2 is really you, so I'll double click and I'll say Mark. And then I'll double click on mine, and Steve. So now, I could clearly see that these are labeled. Uh, the Mark components of Mark and Steve. Yep. Okay. Now, at this point, uh, I might go through and listen to them. And, and really what's nice about create, create, excuse me, recording in two mics is that if there's a problem with my channel, um, I could always use the, the audio from, from, from me your mic. And maybe bump it up a little bit. Right, yeah. because we're, so we're standing so close to each yeah, other. We're getting uh, Right, getting so, each other. so what I might do in this situation is, let's just say, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. This little section here is is, you know, I bump my mic or something, I hit it, and I, you know, I can go ahead and select it, press V, and then I can go down here to your mic, and I can select that, and then use my, um, you know, selection tool and a drag upward. And you increase just that section. And I've just and it, increased and that it, section. And it gives some fade handles in there automatically. Right, you got some fade yeah. handles, and I could, I, if I needed to, I can boost that section just from, you can, and again, look at how awesome the waveform gives you interactive feedback yep. about what's happening. So I'm just boosting that section. And I might do this, you know, when we go through this, I'll look for other areas. There might be a problem with one of the mics. And this is one of the values of working in component mode. Yes. Right, so. It's yeah, very so, easy to adjust each mic independently. Correct. So that, that's really handy. So then I'll go through all that, and then I'll come up here, and I'll just collapse the audio components. So assuming I've done all of that work, I have one more step to do. I'll go ahead and apply an effect to this. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to hit uh, Command-5. And I'm, gonna, I'm in my effects browser, and I'm going to go down to audio, and uh, I'm going to type in compressor, C-O-M-P, and I want to apply a compressor to this. Now, compressors are something I use all the time to even out the dynamics. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with compressors, what they do, I call them automatic volume turn downers. <laughs> I, I like that because what, when it hits a certain threshold, it's like somebody there turning the volume down, yeah. turning the volume down, turning the volume down. But it, it does actually a lot more than that, but it's a very simplistic um, Yeah, because sometimes you put it on and actually, everything gets louder. Right, really what it does is it, it, it brings... the dynamic range. It, it compresses the dynamic range. It makes mm -hmm. the loud parts softer and the soft parts louder. Okay. So it really does more than just what I said, Yeah. but you kind of get the general idea. Of what but, it does. Right, now in this case, a lot of times I want a compressor because maybe, you know, you, you know, you're... you're 
particularly loud and I may be a softer and I don't want to go into the individual components. I want to just even out the dynamics. The whole thing. The whole okay. Thing. Okay. Does that make uh -huh. sense? It does. All right. So sense. now I'm going to apply this compressor at the clip level, not at the component level. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab this compressor, drag it on there and immediately the waveform reacts. Everything jumps up. Yeah. yeah. Really handy. Now to work with the compressor, I'm going to go to the inspector and open the HUD. Okay. And just because I like a clean interface, I'm going to close the um, FX browser, excuse me, FX browser, and just work with the compressor. All right, now, I always recommend setting things to what I call a rest position. Okay, I have no idea what these are, so I'll take the, um, uh, what's called the ratio, and I'll talk about it in a minute. I'll set that to one to one. I'll take the compressor threshold itself, set that to the top, and I'll set the auto gain, which you really don't want auto gain on, you want it off when okay. using a compressor. So those are the three things I always do when I apply a compressor. That auto gain is kind of like the auto gain or the AGC in the camera that can pump up the background volume, which it's, you usually don't want to have. It's bad. Yeah. Turn it off. AGC is bad. Bad, bad. I don't yes. even know why that's on by default. Yes. It, it just is. Okay. okay. So let's talk about the first setting, which is the ratio slider. Now what this, did to, this does is determine how much of the signal is compressed once the threshold has been released. Okay. Re um, when, what would I say? When the threshold has been hit or, hit. Okay. you know, you get the idea. So, so once you hit a, hit a certain volume, it will then apply whatever the ratio is there. That's right. So right now it's turned off. At one to mm -hmm. one, there is no compression being applied. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's in, in the mm -hmm. rest position. But if I set this to two to one, which I'll do now, what's going to happen is the when the threshold is reached, the volume will be reduced by half. Okay. If I set it to four to one, it'll be reduced by a quarter. Half of the amount over the threshold? Half of the amount over the okay, threshold. Okay, so the threshold's here, and then the volume's here, it'll cut that in half. Let's use actual numbers. Okay. If, if, the, threshold, if, if the threshold is hit, yes. and uh, you have 10, B, 10, B, 10 dB, dB feeding, feeding into it, yes. it'll reduce it by five dB. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so that's really the math behind it. Okay. Okay, so, so I have this set at four to one now, for dialog, you could set this anywhere from four to one to six to one. You're gonna, you're gonna have to play with this. I, I tend to like to start it around four to one right. for, for this. Now, I'm gonna now use this compressor threshold. This is the switch, this is the trigger. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead and, and move this down to see, so you can see what's happening in the waveform and in this graph here, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, I also set the release. That's, you know, how soon the compressor let's is. Go let's go over there. Uh -huh. I set it around 60 milliseconds is okay. where the start point is. But notice as I drag the threshold, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna really push this way down. You can see as I bring this down, yeah. look what's happening to the waveform here. All of the dynamics are being down. squished, uh -huh. right? I'm, it's acting on way more of the levels than I want it to. And okay. you can see in the graph here that this is your input. This is what's these are all, this is what's being compressed. Right. Almost everything in there is being compressed. Lower volumes aren't being compressed as much. Right. But all the higher volumes are being compressed quite the, a bit. Right. And now this is something you might want for music. If you have like a drum and you got really loud like dynamics, mm -hmm. you might want to do that. Vocals. This is this is bad. You wouldn't okay. want to you wouldn't want to step on your audio like that. Uh, so the other thing is, um, I, I'll just you know bring this back up. I always just wanted just a gentle compression. So I'm just I'm dealing with the peaks, and maybe you mm -hmm. talked a little bit louder. Maybe I yelled or, at you or whatever in the, yeah. in, in the episode. <laughs> get so I'll just excited. yeah, I get too excited. So um, I'll set you know I'll set this threshold here, you know, and then because the compressor works on the principle of reducing gain, maybe like right here, I'm reducing a lot of gain. I'm going to set this to about here. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and bring some gain back into the signal, okay? So you kind of, you, you smoosh it down, but then you bring it, everything then I, then, back yeah, up. Yeah, and I bring a little bit of gain back in. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go too far with this either because what's going to start happening is you bring the gain up too well, high. You can see all the peaks, all the yellow peaks. Yes, but it's form. also raising the gain of the things uh, I the don't floor. want. Like, okay. so you're going to hear us, <gasps> our okay, breathing, breathing, and it's just really, it's not. The yet. noise floor comes up. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you, get, you don't really want to go too, too far with this. With mm -hmm. The whole idea of the compressor is I want, I don't want a bunch, I don't want a bunch of peaks so right. I'm like, uh, you know, overmodulating or what have you. I just want to get it to where I, I maintain my dy dynamics without, you know, distorting the peaks is essentially what I want to do. Okay. And you can see kind of the roll off here in the graph, what's yep. happening here. Okay. So that's the essence of a compressor. Um, and then, of course, I'd want to play this back and watch my scopes. Let me go over here. Watch your levels. Watch my right. levels. Yeah, so watch my, you'll definitely want to do this with your audio meters turned on so you can kind of see where. And this is however you want to set up. I'm saying, I'm just 
I'm going to want my average level about minus 12 for output. So okay. it's a little low. So what I might do then is go just back into this game. game. Just, just introduce just a little bit more gain in there mm -hmm. and, you know, see if I can get the, these evened out a little bit more. Like I, do a, I do a show every year. The, the point right. is just try to keep the, the levels at around minus yeah. 12 for the whole thing without peaking and without introducing uh, too much volume in the noise floor. Okay. So two, two, two quick questions. Yeah. The, the attack, you left at zero. Do you usually leave that at zero? So well, that means uh, it jumps yeah, right in, it well, jumps in right away? Yeah, I, again, for dialogue, there's really not a big need for like attack. It's really uh -huh. for like if you get a drum where you got like eighth notes and 16th notes, you want that compressor attacking okay. that signal. So for, for, um, for dialogue, dialogue, I just. It's, I, it's good I where know. it is. Yeah. Okay. It is good. With, in fact, when, as you play this, you'll notice you can see like, you can see that there's a little graph that's telling you how much of the signal when is being, jumping in. When, yeah. it's, when the compressor is actually being triggered. Okay. And it, you know, nice. so, yeah, it's, it's very handy. So, you know, the more I drag this down threshold, you can see it's much of that signal is being more. stepped right. on. And there are some presets in here also, if you're, if you're not comfortable working with it, that you can sort of pick a preset to start with if you wanted to. Yeah, I've never, I gotta tell you, I'm not a big fan of presets yeah. because every every piece of dialogue or, you know, musical, it's different. It's, it's, right? it's different. Yeah. I mean, I might be able to do it, here's what I would do. I would save this as my own preset. Uh, so that's okay. like, I would save an effect. Once you've for, got it set up. Yeah, yeah, once I get it set up. In fact, nice, nice. I, I've actually done that. If I go into here, you'll notice, um, let's see here. I have my own special sauce that I use for the show. Um, Let's see if I can find it. Under five. Click, click Look, the see, there's there a okay. under five bo voiceover compressor. So this yeah. one has both a compressor and an EQ. Okay. And you might tweak it on a particular show, but most of the settings are probably already dialed in for that. Exactly. Great. Very good. Right. Nice. So that's it. There's that's our, our little workflow with our MacBreak Studio. Well, all of us as video editor, all of us as video editors, don't always focus as much as we should on audio. So this is really useful information. Hope you guys found that useful. Thanks for watching us here. Check us out YouTube channel, Twitter, Facebook, all the usual places, and we'll see you next week here on MacBreak Studio.